Good day, my friends. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Daily Torah Broadcast, a ministry of the Messianic Discipleship Institute. Remember, you can always visit us online at mymdi.org and download previous episodes of the Daily Torah Podcast. Contact us and let us know what you are learning so far. We do love hearing from our listeners. Today we are on day five of this week's Daily Torah series called Vayera. Yesterday we reviewed the lineage of Lot's family and also discussed one of the most difficult passages of the Bible in Galatians 5. Today we will discuss the fulfillment of the promise given to Abraham and Sarah, the dramatic events of Elisha, and who are the seeds of promise in our Brit Hadashah portion. If you have your Bibles and notepads handy, get them ready or follow along now and come back and review later. Let's pick up the story in Genesis chapter 20, beginning in verse 10. We ended our Torah portion discussion yesterday with Abraham and Sarah moving to Gerar after the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, where once again, uh, where once again, Abraham told the king that Sarah was her sister. God intervenes with King Abimelech in a dream warning him not to touch Sarah and that Abraham was a prophet. Today we will continue the story in verse 10 of Genesis 20. We read, Then Abimelech said to Abraham, What did you have in view that you have done this thing? And Abraham said in verse 11, Because I thought surely the fear of God is not in this place and they will kill me on account of my wife. But indeed, she truly is my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother, and she became my wife. And it came to pass when God caused me to wander from my father's house that I said to her, This is your kindness that you should do for me. In every place, wherever we go, say of me, He is my brother. So, as I mentioned yesterday, this was a way for Abraham and Sarah to protect themselves and to keep safe. Now, continuing in verse 14, it says, Then Abimelech took sheep, oxen, and male and female servants and gave them to Abraham. And he restored Sarah his wife to him. And Abimelech said, See, my land is before you. Dwell where it pleases you. Then to Sarah he says, Behold, I have given your brother a thousand pieces of silver. Indeed, this vindicates you before all who are with you and before everybody. So do you see, my friends, that everywhere Abraham goes and everyone he meets, he stays faithful to God and God blesses him with land, with silver, and favor in the eyes of the people, in eyes of the king. God will do the same to us when we are fully committed to him. Yes, there will be times of testing. And when we overcome those tests, a blessing awaits. Remember this, my friends, as you go through your daily challenges. In verse 17, we read that not only did God give Abimelech a warning in a dream, but he miraculously closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech. After this encounter, the prophet Abraham prays to God, and God heals Abimelech, his wife, and his female servants, proving that his dream, Abimelech's dream, was real and that it was from God. Now, continuing in our daily Torah portion for today, we see the fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham and Sarah with the birth of Yitzhak, of Isaac. In verse 4 of chapter 21 of Genesis, we read, Then Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Remember, that is the Abrahamic covenant, the sign, the circumcision. And if you remember, we had a deep discussion on circumcision in yesterday's episode. But let's continue with our story here in verse 5 of Genesis 21. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Yitzhak was born to him. Sarah said, God has made me laugh 
Everyone who hears will laugh with me, she said. Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? For I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw that the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, mocking. Therefore she said to Abraham, Cast out this handmaid and her son, for the son of this handmaid will not be heir with my son Isaac. The thing was very grievous to Abraham's sight on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, Don't let it be grievous in your sight because of the boy and because of your handmaid. In all that Sarah says to you, listen to her voice. For from Isaac will your seed be called. I will also make a nation of the son of the handmaid, because he is your seed also. So you see here, my friends, we see the fulfillment of the two main branches of Abraham's family, the branch of Isaac and the branch of Ishmael. In the coming weeks, we will go into more details of the history and the challenges of these two people groups. But for today, we need to understand that Isaac is the promised seed. He is the seed of the promise given to Abraham. Now let's turn to our half Torah portion, continuing with the story of Elisha and the Shumanite woman and her son in 2 Kings, 2 Kings verses 24 through 28. If you remember from yesterday, the promise of a son was given to the Shumanite woman by Elisha, for her and her husband's kindness was fulfilled. But then when he was older, when the son was older, suffered a traumatic episode, possibly a head aneurysm out in the field, and he died. If we pick up the story here in verse 24, it says, then she saddled a donkey and said to her ser servant, Drive and go forward. Don't slacken me the riding except I bid you. So she went and came to the man of God to Mount Carmel. And it happened when the Son of God saw her afar off that he said to Jergazi, his, his servant, Behold, yonder is the Shumanite. Please run now to meet her and ask her, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? And she answered to him, It is well. But when she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught hold of his feet. And Jagazi came near to thrust her away. But the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is vexed within her, and the Lord has hid it from me and has not told me. Then she said, did I desire a son of my Lord? Didn't I say, do not deceive me? Notice that this matter is hidden from Elisha. He, he's not sure what has happened. And tomorrow we will see why God hid this from him and then what he needs to do. It's a very traumatic episode. But it all turns out for the good, as we will see tomorrow. But let's conclude today's Dor daily Torah portion with our Brit Hadashah reading in Romans chapter 9, verses 6 through 9. In Romans 9, we see Paul affirms the promise made to Abraham. We read beginning in verse 6. In Romans 9, verse 6, we read, Paul says, but it is not as though the word of God has come to nothing. For they are not all Israel that are of Israel. Neither because they are Abraham's seed are they all children. But in Isaac, in Yitzhak, will your seed be called. 
That is, it is not the children of the flesh who are called, who are the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as a seed. For this is a word of promise. God says, at the appointed time I will come and Sarah will have a son. Now notice, my friends, it is through the seed of Isaac, not Abraham, that the word of promise given to Abraham springs forth and flows through. It is the lineage of Isaac that the Messiah, the true seed of promise, the first of the first fruits comes. And it is through Yeshua, his seed, through the calling and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, culminating through the bride of Messiah, that a future family of spiritual beings, a spiritual house of Israel, will be born and flourish for all eternity. In Galatians 3, verse 16, Paul tells us, Now to Abraham, in Galatians 3, 16, And now, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say into seeds as of many, but as of one, into your seed, who is Messiah. Continuing in verse 19, what purpose then does the law serve? It was added because of sin, of transgressions, until the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was appointed through angels by the hand of a mediator. And dropping down to verse 29 of Galatians 3, we are told, And if you are Messiah's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. My friends, we are destined for eternal glory through the promise given to Abraham and carried through to the true seed of promise, Yeshua, the Messiah. The Apostle John summarizes this in 1 John chapter 3, verses 8 to 9. In 1 John chapter 3, verses 8 to 9, we read, He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin. Speaking of Yeshua, his seed, the seed of the Holy Spirit remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. My friends, a glorious future awaits us if we stay faithful and endure to the end. So I want to end it there today. I want you to meditate on these words of John and of Paul and see how they tie in to the promises given to Abraham passed on to Isaac, to Jacob, down through the line until Messiah. And it is through his seed that we will become partakers of this glorious family of God. Take some time to do some deep reflection on your walk in your future living with Messiah, the bridegroom. Share this message, my friend, with your friends and family. Post a link on your social media pages and help us spread the gospel. You never know whose life you may affect. Remember to visit us at mymdi.org. Take one of our free classes. Download the Daily Tourist Schedule so you can follow along with us on a day-to-day -day basis. You can also order the Daily Tourist series of books to follow along. And if the Lord inspires you, please consider becoming a monthly sponsor so that we can reach more people with these messages. Just click the donate button on the website. 
So until tomorrow, Shalom Aleichem, blessings and Shalom, my friends.